Hey, somebody's got to share this podcast. You did? Excellent. Good morning, afternoon, or evening. You are listening to The Professional Noticer. Well, winks as good as a nod to a blind mule. Here you and I will use common sense and all the wisdom we can muster to move beyond what is true and go all the way to the truth. Ladies and gentlemen, you're such a wonderful crowd. With actual listeners in more than 100 countries, I am The Professional Noticer. So, uh, where are you from? Hello, everyone. I'm Andy Andrews. Hey, thank you for making me a part of your week. As the professional noticer, it is my job to professionally notice something for you. Nothing's off limits. We answer questions, we talk, business, spiritual issues, popular culture, we even tackle the odd conundrum like what has to be broken before you can use it? And the answer would be an egg, of course. (laughs) Look, my purpose here today and with every show we do is to play the part of a best friend or coach. I want to help you live the life you would live if all your toughest questions were answered. Our sponsor this week is itam.org. That's I-A-I-T-A-M dot org. They're the only global member-based training organization dedicated to meeting the needs of IT asset management professionals. Now, this is an unbelievable organization. Dr. Barbara Mbiesa is someone you should know. I see her... Uh, quoted in the news or appearing on news programs quite often. And I want you to understand that Dr. Barb actually created this industry. Again, ITAM is the only global training organization turning out IT asset managers that corporations all over the world immediately hire. So check them out. You can go to school on this with an online program and get a degree that is in actually it's in huge demand it's actually in huge demand you want to know what companies depend on itam to train their asset managers go to iaitam.org and look through their client list i'm telling you it's everybody from sony pictures to nasa to the united nations and to me it's hilarious that google is one of their clients google yahoo facebook microsoft apple When these people have IT issues, they hire the people that ITAM has trained. That's I-A-I-T-A-M dot org. Observations and answers. That's what we do here on the Professional Noticer. And uh, today we're going to have some observations and and hopefully we we might get some answers that we don't expect. Or maybe we might get answers that I don't expect. Anyway, uh, for the Father's Day edition of The Professional Noticer, we have as our guest my favorite two young men, our sons, Austin and Adam Andrews. Welcome to the show, guys. Thank Thank you you. for having us. (laughs) (laughs) This is already funny to me. Okay, here's my first question. Um, Who do you like more, mom or me? Don't, 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 Don't answer that. I knew you. I, I did had you even a feeling. Start to answer that. No, I knew that that was going to be the first question. Really, you did. I figured that was. I did. I just. I saw a mmm on both of your lips, and so I thought, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't. That one's not getting. All an right, answer. stop, stop, Adam. You got to stop. You're hitting the microphone right. with your chair. <laughs> Okay. The yeah, just stop. And all right. I'm sorry. Yeah, I said that needs to be left in there. All right, we're just let's recording. just leave it. All right. You can't, all right. So we're going to start again. Okay. And and so we don't have to start again. Okay. We, we don't have keep, to start. We just, we'll keep just rolling. Keep, right, yeah, we'll just keep rolling. <laughs> we'll just show everybody what our lives are we're, really we're just like. like. Bang into the microphone yeah, a couple like Adam times. Quit, make a little more Adam real. Put the Put the thing down. Stop banging against this. Yes, take take your hand out of the fire. Don't put the, you know, good grief. Here, here's a good question for you guys. As you were growing up, who do you think mom let get away with more? Adam, 100%. 
Yeah, he's probably right. One hundred percent. Really? Why is that? I feel like he uh-huh. gave her so much trouble. Whoa! Whoa! Was no, no, no. Little, no. She was just. I was like, an angel. I'm gonna I was back a, off a little bit. I was an angel. I, I don't. I don't. I don't see think it, that though. was the answer. I think you were just like the, the little 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 cute baby when you were tiny, and when I, I had cute. already I had already come along, and so she was like, I, I don't know. <laughs> Usually it's that kind of firstborn that gets the nod, but but Adam, he really did. He's not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I remember one time uh, Adam look, <laughs> looking up at me. Adam was like, Matt, he was like about five. And we were at, with a, a group of people at a camp. Adam, stop your chair. Stop your chair. Mr. So we're going to we're gonna have to like, <laughs> lasso <still>. you. <laughs> this is the way this is all the time, everybody. Um, but I remember one time Adam sitting in my lap, say four or five years old, and we're the group of people. And we're talking about just parents and, and stuff. And Adam comes out with this. He said, you know. I can get mom. Now, this is like four or five years old. He says, you know, I can get mom to do anything I want her to do because all I have to do is give her my little puppy dog eyes and she does whatever I want her to do. And I remember everybody in the room looking like, Dude, I don't believe you should have said that, you know. And and I said, really, how? I don't think it mattered that he said it. It really didn't. It didn't turn out to matter. But I remember saying, "What was it look like, Adam?" And he kind of gave it, mm, you know. <laughs> it's like that's what I do. Yeah, very proud of that. He still does it, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. He does. I mean, he still gets what if it's not broke. Don't fix it. What do you think? What do you think <laughs> is the the what what? And it used to infuriate you, Austin. Oh yeah. What what was the the time that you were the maddest at him getting away with something? Oh, I don't know. There, I don't know if there was a specific time. <laughs> it was just like I don't know. I'd kind of kind of grab him or something, you know. Like we used to wrestle all the time, so I'd like I'd kind of you know grab him around his neck real lightly, and then Mom would walk by and he'd grab my arm and push it into his neck and go, "I'm choking, Mom! I'm choking!" <laughs> <laughs> and I'd go, "What?" And then I'd get in trouble for. Just, uh, just being there. I remember. I remember. Uh, you know, Mama didn't like you guys wrestling. I don't get that. Though. That's part of like. like that's how that, we show yeah. love. Really, that's how you. Show I, don't, love. I don't know. If that was it, but it was just like that's part of like having a brother, I guess. Just, well, that's what I would tell her. I would say, dear, that's what that's what guys do. I, I don't think she she. Like that? No, she's she didn't, didn't like totally it. grasp the concept. No, no, it was uh, it was pretty amazing to see because she would get, she, you know, because because Adam, you really would. I oh, would just kind of would. <laughs> Adam, I definitely would. I would just kind of laugh because Adam would be. I mean, you would try to fake Austin into thinking he was killing you. Well, sometimes it really did feel like he was killing well, me. Well, like, that's a bit harsh. That's I mean, not harsh. killing me, but, you know, sometimes. <laughs> when was the first time? I, now, I remember one time having to stop and talk to you guys because I had to stop and take Austin aside. Because for a long time, you guys were pretty equal, but then there was a point where... Austin, like, past puberty, and then, <laughs> and then I had to take Austin aside and say, hey, buddy, uh, you're kind of a young man now, and you are wrestling a, a little boy, and so you're going to have to back off just a little bit, and and so, I, and I could see in Austin, I could see the yes, sir, in Austin's face, but I could see the no sir in his eyes. <laughs> and um That's how I do. When when did you ever get him? When did you when did you first He used to sit up I don't remember about I mean, he's gotten me a couple of times with wrestling, but I remember I don't know why this came to mind, but I remember, you know, we've got the the upstairs and he used to sit up there with the nerf gun. Oh yeah, I'd smoke him. <laughs> I know. I would walk. I'd come walking out of the uh, 
the my room because I'd just taken a shower or something. These Nerf darts would fly down. <laughs> that, that Sometimes was, I'd sit there room. for like 30 or 40 minutes that before you'd walk by. Revenge, little Nerf sniper. <laughs> you know, it's funny, talking with, with Ty Bullard, you know, Ty's boys are younger, mm-hmm. right? And and so Ty would say sometimes he would say, boy, jo- Johanna just goes nuts with the boys wrestling. And that very next week, you guys were like 18 and 15 at that point. And you're, what are you, you're 20 and 18 now, yes. okay? Well, you guys are like 18 and 15. And Mr. It, Adam just had a birthday. That's right. Mr. Adam did just have a birthday, 18 years old. But I took a picture of you guys with Austin walking around holding Adam upside down. And I sent it to Ty saying, you know, just tell Johanna it doesn't get any better. It's not like they're going to stop just because they get older. And so, but it is. always a good time, though. Yeah. I, I always had, I had a great time as a dad sleeping in the same room with you guys at the hunting camp. Because you guys would would talk in the middle of the night, and you couldn't understand any of it. You'd talk in your sleep, but you would answer each other. You're like talking to each other. And the other one would go, and it would go back and forth. And it never stayed long enough that I could get it recorded, but that was just crazy. And so do you? Um, your rooms are kind of connected. Your rooms are connected by a bathroom so do you do you ever hear each other now yes I, I, he more sleep talks sometimes i like i'll yell. sleep walk occasionally yeah. too i went i got up one night and i i stole all of adam's sheets i don't remember what i did with mine but i like woke up in my bed and i had taken all his pillows <laughs> and his sheets and i was like i don't know how this got here but yeah he, he uh is I think I talk more, yeah. And uh, Adam will Adam will have a scream every now and again. Yeah, I'll yell. Really? <laughs> like what? Like I don't know. Like I'll, I'll like are they are they bad dreams? Yeah, some of them. And then well, sometimes I guess I just yell. The, the, <laughs> the first time I heard, I thought something was really wrong because I I was like. It was late one night, and I was going back to my room, and right as I opened the door from in his room, I just hear, ah! <laughs> I was like, walked in there, and I said, are you okay? And he goes, mm. <laughs> I was like, oh, he's just asleep. <laughs> what, is, what, is your, what is your earliest memory, both of you guys? What, what do you remember? I, I, I'm just curious, because... For some reason, my earliest memory is getting a call from the Easter Bunny. I can remember that. I mean, I was like two or three years old. We lived in Birmingham, Alabama. I think it was David Orr that called and was the Easter Bunny. Was it the Easter Bunny? No, it wasn't the Easter Bunny. It wasn't the real Easter Bunny? (laughs) Sorry. Wait. He's not. Yeah, I'm sorry. (laughs) Sorry, Adam. What is your earliest memory? Uh, it was after Ivan, I think. I was in a red wagon. I don't remember who was pulling me. Someone after was, Hurricane Ivan. Yes, or someone was pulling me in a red wagon down the street to see our old house. I'm trying to think. That's a hard question. Do you have any early memories? Do, do, you have any, <laughs> do you have any? I remember like evacuating for Ivan. So I would have been four, I think. I <laughs> yeah. remember I, I, you were two, or you were two. What do you guys remember about that time? The red wagon, and that's about it. The red wagon, that's I, about it. I remember. Uh, I remember going to. We evacuated to Lake Martin. I remember hanging. Yeah, that was at the Paces House. Up, up in Alexander City. Right. I remember, th- like, I remember being kind of excited. I mean, I obviously didn't really know what was going on, but I remember being kind of excited because it was like 
we get to stay in this house on the lake for a little while and blah, blah, blah. And all our friends are going to stay with us. And I didn't understand that everyone's houses are getting ripped to shreds right now. And, right. um, and the town's getting blown away. Um, yeah, I just, I remember like kind of walking around the lake and stuff. I remember getting, the weather getting really bad. And I guess that was the hurricane coming, hitting the shore. You know, before you guys were born, um, we went over to, we evacuated to Mobile. It wasn't a big hurricane, but uh, mom and I went, evacuated over to Mobile and stayed with Uncle Kevin and Aunt Glenda and Judson, who is just, Judson and Mary have you know, just had their first baby. This will be Judson's first Father's Day. But Judson was like, I don't know, he was like five. And I remember when we pulled up the driveway, Judson runs out and said, Uncle Andy, Aunt Polly, it's going to be great. We might lose all the electricity. I know. That, that was, like, yeah. yeah, I always enjoyed that, that was, whenever that, I was little. Yeah, that was something that's like, it's a problem when you get older, I guess. But when you're little, it's like really exciting. Yeah. Like I remember you being... You flashlights and stuff. Yeah, I remember being in the second grade and there was a huge storm, like one of those electrical storms that came in and the teacher left the classroom. There were like nine of us in that class. The teacher left the classroom and we all like huddled together and prayed for the power to go. Are you serious? (laughs) Yeah. You prayed for the power to go. It was always fun in school whenever the power went out. Well, yeah, because everything shut down. You didn't have to do any schoolwork. And it got super dark. Mm -hmm. You guys had a couple of teachers uh, during your school career that you didn't have to do much of anything anyway. That's true. (laughs) A couple here and there. (laughs) You're still in your school career, though, so it's... Yeah, you better be careful what you say, Adam, because you're you're still in your school career. It wasn't it. What do you think? What what do you... (laughs) Adam's shaking his head. Adam's shaking his head. It's like, I better keep my mouth shut here. So what do you you think... Here's here's an interesting question. What, What do you think that you learned from your mom and dad that helped you in school? Now, I know it wasn't anything academic because both your mom and dad was like, we, we stopped being able to help you with your homework when you were in the fourth grade. But, but what did you learn that you, that you think helped you? Um, that uh, much, huh? That, that okay. much. Okay. Uh, the Mile and nod and yes, sir, and yes, ma'am helped a lot. Why, yeah. why do you say that? I still hear people say, I still hear people comment to me about you guys saying yes, sir, and yes, ma'am. And yeah, that, yeah. I guess, like, the I mean, please and thank you also helped. Yeah, being very nice to the teachers, and I mean, e- even if there's something that you're like, you're pretty sure you're right about or something like that or, you know, I don't know. The, you do better with that than me. The, I mean, like, like the, it, this is a stupid example, Like, but it, like if the dog really did eat the homework, she's not going to believe you anyways. Or like, you know, you can't win a lot of fights against the teacher, so right. just because they're the teacher, I guess. So you know not to get in one. Yeah, because if you get in one, even if you're... Maybe right about something. Yeah, I mean, when you're when you're a kid, a teacher is like a TSA agent or an umpire. Right. You're not going to win that argument. Yeah. So. Yeah. But I I think because I mean the kids who always argued with them or something like that they they were always the kids who uh, I don't know didn't get the benefit of the doubt in <laughs> certain other situations or uh, right I don't know. I think you're you're right, Adam. The I think the smiling, the smiling while you talk, and nodding. Yeah, that's smart. You know, Adam was really good at that right from the start, and that's oh, yeah. I worked th- worked on mom quite well. You worked on mom <laughs> quite well. I know. I mean, I, Adam, but I I would find it working on me when I knew what he was doing. It's a puppy dog face. Puppy dog <laughs> Get face. Get you every time. <laughs> yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
Yeah, I, I, it, it just it was it was amazing to me, and um, I wonder some. I, I wonder if now, do you guys feel like that has translated into? I mean, as you guys are older, I mean, I you're you're young men now, and so and both of you have your own businesses. That's another thing I hear about you guys is you're very entrepreneurial. So. Uh, Austin, you go first. Tell me, tell me how your kind of how your business life progressed. I mean, because that yours started when you were like twelve or thirteen, I guess, right? Maybe a hair before that, because I mean, officially, I guess it started when we were twelve or twelve or thirteen with the citrus business. Where um, sport, it was called Sporty Citrus, take care and uh, taking care of citrus trees around town, um, and just manage. I'm managing the trees for the city for a little while, um, but it probably started a little before that because um, we used to. Adam and I and neighbor Lacey, we oh lord, we I know where you're going. Here. We we used to. Uh, when mom and dad would leave town, actually, we would take. Can wait, say that part again. When mom and dad would leave town, yeah, actually. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to be aware <laughs> that this was done when we mom were making and dad money, were though. out of town. We were making money, though. We, okay, uh, go ahead. Uh, we would we have a bunch of citrus trees in our yard, so we were probably nine or ten, maybe, and we would uh, we would take all the fruit off the trees. <laughs> that was mom and dad were growing and we would some of it before it was ripe maybe and that was, that was where adam's salesmanship really came in right, yeah so keep going but we uh we would pick it all we'd set up a little table right by the street our our driveway is really close to a stop sign so you could make the drivers feel feel really awkward if you stared at them for a minute. And <laughs> you, you can make, you can, they'd they'd be more inclined to buy if you were waiting at the stop yeah. sign. So all you all you salespeople out there, just remember this: the yeah, sales the tip sign. number one for these boys: just get it, get them at a stop sign and stare. Get at them at an awkward spot. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, we'd sell them fruit. They'd stop. We'd sell them overpriced fruit, overpriced, uh, not ripe fruit, actually. Um, <laughs> what would you say? What? This, I this is more Adam's I right. remember coming home and you guys showing me like forty-seven dollars that you had from like you know uh, that fifteen was, pieces. That of was fruit. big money too. <laughs> I was so proud of that. Um, I mean, so so Adam yeah. was your was he your sales guy? Oh, Adam Adam was the salesman all the way. Adam, yeah, I remember he <laughs> he sold a. a when when oranges are unripe, they're they're very green. And Adam sold an unripe orange as a lime to a lady. <laughs> I did. She came back. She was like, "You little swindler." <laughs> yeah. I didn't we, know we, what we that kept word the money. Meant. That, we kept the money. That's though. right. Yeah. You did. You didn't know what that word meant, did you? Did. You, you were like, "Thanks." Yeah, <laughs> Thanks. I thought that it was. I mean, I was like eight. Yeah. Adam comes to us when we got home. He said, one lady called me a swiddler. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was good, though. We we did that uh, a few times. We, we graduated to lemonade eventually. Um, yeah. But, God, quit with the tape measure, son. Golly, he's got to have something in his hand. Got to be making noise. Got to be moving. Uh, good grief. Uh, yeah. Um, Would you say Adam hasn't changed much since he was six? He's bigger. <laughs> he's bigger. <laughs> he's bigger. He, yeah. he can fight better. He's bigger. <laughs> um, so, so okay, so how did your entrepreneurial career progress? Went from that to uh, the citrus thing. I'm trying to think if there was anything in between. Um. I don't really think there was. Yeah, you guys sold fruit there at the stop sign uh, several times, actually, mm -hmm. until we found out about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Put it into that. Put a stop quick. to that real real fast. Yeah. Bunch of little swiddlers. Yeah. Um, 
Just a shame because we're supplying the people of Ono with citrus. I know. Give the people what they want. <laughs> Supply and demand. Yeah. <laughs> give them what they wanted. Sense. You were giving them what they wanted, which was to get away from you and be able to go and drive on past the stop sign. I mean, and potato, they gotta, potato. Yeah. <laughs> and they we, got their citrus fruit and we got some money. <laughs> did you guys put Lacey in front of the car or something? <laughs> well, what we, we'd do we, is we'd start at our driveway. Like, we'd have the people down there. And they'd start slowing down at our driveway, and then we'd run alongside oh, yeah. the car, <laughs> waving at them and telling them to stop. We, so by the time they got to where it's against the law to not stop, <laughs> they were like obligated to roll down the window and talk to us. Yeah, we'd jog alongside yeah. the cars, waving at them. <laughs> oh my gosh. Really tearing up the pressure. Yeah. All yeah. right. And so now you are AustinLegacyKnives.com. Yeah, after, after the citrus. Um, now, uh, <laughs> turned into making knives. Um, so that, that's, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what I do at the moment. I've been doing that since probably ninth grade of high school. I started doing it. Um, it wasn't a business for a while cause I had to get decent at it before I could sell. I remember you making your first knife and kind of thinking, wow, I mean, it's a knife. I mean, it was, it was kind of crude looking, but but I remember thinking that it was kind of like, uh, it, it, I, I don't know. I always thought it was kind of like a Boy Scout badge. Like you made one knife, now you're going to make something else. You're going to do something else. But but I had forgotten. I mean, you were collecting knives since you were a little kid. Oh, yeah. I mean, Lord, you would have to come ask us permission. Can I look at my knives? You, you know, because it's this little bitty kid with 200 knives in his bedroom. Yeah. And, <laughs> but he'd put them out on the bed and count them and sort them and put them into different. Yeah, I would count them. <laughs> I don't know what I was doing there. Oh, but... yeah. You'd come out and go, I have 114 now. You know, and people would say, what do we give Austin for his birthday? And it's just like, go to Walmart, get a knife. He'll be thrilled, you know. And so, but then when you started really making those things, there, there be, what were you saying? Excuse <laughs> you me. Go psychopath. <laughs> <laughs> Laying out your knives when you're six years old. That does go sound a little psycho. Yeah, that, that, yeah, that sounds a little off. Yeah, but now, yeah, it but does. <laughs> he turned yeah. in the I mean, right he, direction. You say that with a different tone. He was six years old. He was laying out a thousand knives on his bed. On <laughs> Just stare at them. <laughs> yeah, that does sound kind of weird. But instead of making a left turn, you made a right turn. That's right. You didn't use them on anybody. You, That's right. You actually started we making know them. Of. <laughs> that we know of. But the knives are beautiful. It, 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 you know, go to AustinLegacyKnives.com and and check them out. I I wish you would just for a second talk about what I think is your coolest idea about how you make uh, the heritage knives for people. The heritage knives are um, where if you have a piece of wood that's from your family's history, like it can be an object though, like not just a block of wood, like a, a baseball bat or a gun stock handle, um, a rake, mama's rolling pin, all, all piece of granddaddy's kind of barn. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you done. You did a set of steak knives for Mac and Julie Richard out in Texas with the. Fence post from the ranch, right? Right, yep, a fence post. Um, all this stuff that can be like from a family's history or something like that um, that means something uh, to them. Uh, you can send me the piece of wood and do like a set of steak knives or a set of kitchen knives or a hunting knife or something but you, you know it, it can repurpose that wood that's like otherwise never used and you can say this was the rake that granddaddy yeah used in his garden or yeah i like the fact that it can be a gift you can give to somebody that nobody ever thought of you know you can say this this was in you know this used to be in daddy's hands so very very cool austin legacy knives and so then adam See, I, it, it's very curious to me that you guys grew up together as close as you were and as close as you right. are. <laughs> no, yeah, I, I still are. And um, I mean, don't you think you still are? Oh, yeah. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like. and, and so 
but there was a, a marked difference in your outdoor interest, right? I tell people a lot of times, I say, I have one, one kid who is a hunter who likes to fish, and I've got another kid who is a fisherman who likes to hunt. But in truth, Adam is a fisherman who would just like rather do that than breathe or eat or probably or anything. And so you that was definitely gonna be that was definitely gonna be your business, right? Yes. Be still, oh, son. You know, <laughs> try, trying to get there. you to kind of lean toward <laughs> the mic. I know like I, Adam's words. wobbling around. I turned so, the mic a little. Yeah, and so, but, but Adam, you, you and Dylan have a business called GulfCoastNation.com. dot com. Yes, sir. and from the very beginning, I have just been impressed with what you guys do. You put out a video every week that goes on YouTube, and uh, you put out Instagram posts and. TikTok Facebook. and Facebook and all this kind of stuff. And so so tell us about GulfCoastNation.com. So it started out just doing the charters from the beach. And then we started doing like Facebook and Instagram to advertise. And we were filming it. So we were like, why not make the YouTube videos that go along with it? And so what we do is you book with us. And we get to the beach a little bit before, a couple hours before y'all. Right, so somebody can either book a, like a six-hour charter yes, sir. or a 12-hour charter. And I love what you guys do in in telling people how different this is going to be because it's like n- nobody gets seasick with you right. guys. Yeah, so you aren't on a boat with a charter, with a normal charter. If you book a six-hour charter, you spend an hour getting there, an hour coming back, an hour going in between spots, so you end up only really fishing for three hours. But with us, we generally have all the lines out except for one, so you can see how we do it. You can take a big hook with a big bait, put it in the back of a kayak. Yeah, because you guys are catching bigger fish than I ever <laughs> see charter boats bring in. Yes, yeah, sir. And we paddle it out, and then uh, drop it off. You're paddling the bait out. Yes, yeah, sir. Drop it off. The reel stays on the beach. And then you set it with loose drag most of the time. And then with the clicker on, and once you hear it, you go get in the harness or fight it from the rod holder. It's a lot of fun, and it is relatively relaxing compared yeah. to being on a boat getting sloshed around. Yeah. Um, I mean, that, that can be relaxing, but it's got to be pretty calm for that to be relaxing. <laughs> right. And you can't order pizza on a boat. Yeah, yeah. you can order pizza. We'll <laughs> that, that's nice. I mean, set you up guys, a grill. I, yeah, I'm just amazed because you guys set up a grill. You cook steaks if, if people want them. Yes. You cook hot dogs or hamburgers. You you literally have pizza delivered. Yes, yeah, so, sir. Yep, Lillian's Pizza right down the road. And you it's guys, pizza too. what mm-hmm. kind of entertainment? I, I came out there one night, just kind of snuck up, just to watch you guys with your with your clients and it seemed like there was some entertainment going on what was that i uh, we have filled out a survey and it's what type of music do you like so it could be country rap classic and one of the sections is i want my captains to sing to us so if you fill that out then so you and dylan were singing yeah, to so it. we will sing to y'all they seem to to really were you singing a funny song because they sure seem to be laughing i That's believe funny. that they were just in shock <laughs> it, how brilliant it, it, the amount of the level our voices are at yeah I, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm sure that was it you know one of the things that that intrigues me about what you guys do is, I mean, this is, this is a real business. I mean, you guys have business license, you have insurance, they, all this. And so the only two things, now just correct me if I'm wrong, but the only two things you guys are not allowed to let the the clients do is they can't, you have to kayak the baits out, yes, right? So they can't kayak baits out. Right. Which I always think, you know, for a client, it's like, yeah, okay, thanks. I'm fine not to kayak a. We actually had some clients this week ask to do it. Oh, really? Yeah, so. They wanted to. They wanted to put that 20 pound hunk of meat on their back and go out. Yeah, yeah. That's not something I'm. 
And then, and, you know, you know, you're doing it in the dark, too. Yes. Yeah, so. Because your shark fishing trips are at night. Yes, yeah, so right? in the summertime, we have to run them at night because of the swimmers and stuff. Right. But yeah, you wouldn't want to get anybody eating or anything. Yeah. yeah. But you're not chumming. No, sir. We don't chum. The sharks are already there. We are <laughs> not bringing them to the area. Right. I mean, they're the already Iowa there. Thinks. You see, that's one thing. <laughs> that's one thing that's curious to me. It's because I, I, I remember reading, uh, you know, pe- people saying, well, you have a better chance of getting, you know, dying by. Uh, you know, bee sting than you do. You may have a better chance of getting struck by lightning. And I always think, you know, I have zero chance of getting eaten by a shark because I ain't swimming in that water because I I have seen so many sharks close to the beach. Yeah, it's kind of <laughs> shocking how many. I don't, I don't feel like as many people who swim would swim if yeah. they knew how many sharks are out there? It's like if you just flew a drone around, just you'll kind of... see sharks swimming in between the shore and people. Yeah. Oh yeah, and because you guys have a really nice drone that you yeah. use on the trips, so people get such a great memory, you know, because they drone shots and they get the the that video that I already posted on YouTube with them and 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 everything, and so. Um, it's yeah, it's funny because when I used to live under the pier, and I'd stand on the pier, and I would watch sharks swimming between swimmers that didn't even know they were there. That's what I don't understand. Is I mean, I I, I like swimming in uh, the Gulf and all, but I don't understand swimming out by a pier where people are fishing and all that. Yeah, yeah. there's a lot of people that swim by that pier, and that. Just doesn't seem and like And that a pier good is idea. just, a, it's an artificial reef. You know, there's so much bait around that pier. And, all, and people are throwing bait off yeah, the pier. I mean, it's not just live chumming. bait. There's a fish cleaning station. Yeah, people. they just throw the carcasses in yeah. the water, so that just brings more sharks. True. In there. It, and lately, shoot. It, it, it's remember? crazy. You can't get a king up. Like, That's true. Yeah. You can't. You, you go sometimes, if you're down here visiting, walk out on the state pier to the T, what we call the T, which is the halfway point on the pier. You just stand there while somebody's cleaning fish and watch what happens when they throw that carcass in the water. You because, can throw an aluminum can over, and they're just so used to well, eating don't, whatever. Well, don't, because they'll find right. you. <laughs> don't, I'm not condoning <laughs> litter, but if you throw anything over, they're so used to right there at that area, they'll just come out of nowhere and smoke it. Right. And, but you guys... When you're when you're out there doing that, so the one thing you don't you don't let clients uh, kayak the baits out, and you don't let co- clients in the water with the shark, right? Yes, yeah, sir. Uh, what we do, especially for the big ones, uh, like tiger sharks and hammerheads, those are prohibited species. So with the new regulations, what do you mean prohibited species? It's just like. I mean, you can't keep them, right. is what you mean. Yes, but sir. you're not keeping them anyway, because right. you're tagging them and yes, releasing sir. them. But you can't do anything to delay the release. So you uh, can't, like, stop and take pictures with them. But it's okay, because we have the GoPros rolling the whole time. So if they are, happen to be in the shot, is the same and you make the shark. And you make sure they're in the shot. Yes. Sir. Yeah, they're yeah. getting their souvenir. They're getting right. their... And so we'll pull still shots and screenshots off the GoPro. And right. Then me and Dylan swim the shark out. Now, what would Mama say about what you just said? <laughs> she doesn't like to be out there at night whenever we're doing it. It, it is kind of freaky to watch you guys head out. I, I mean, the, I remember the first time I went over there and watched you guys do that and seeing you kayak out into the darkness you know, you got this little red light on your head, and you're wearing a life jacket, right. but but still, you know, you're you're taking. What what is the farthest you guys put baits out? The farthest we'll do it is about eight hundred yards. Eight hundred yards. So it's like on average, sometimes like once every blue moon, we'll do it way farther. But you you're like, like I say, way a, half mile out, and you set you send them. You set them like, if you're going to do 800 yards on one, what are the others at? So, for our smaller ones, sometimes we'll put one in the trough, 
right in between the beach and the first sandbar. Then the second one, we'll do another smaller one right on the other side of the bar. And then our fir- our shortest big rig is going to be like right in the middle. And then we'll do a third one or a second one on the, the second big one on the other side of the second bar. And then the third one generally goes way out. Way out. Okay. And so when, you know, Austin, you were out with them one night and you guys had, like, tell me about that night because you were like a client. Now, hopefully, to goodness, you, your brother didn't I charge didn't charge you. for that. Yeah. But, but as a kind of a client, tell about that night, about what happened there. And you're not only a client, you're a sponsor. You sponsor their, their show. Austin Legacy Nights is a sponsor. Yes. He used... Code, what's the code? GCN10. GCN10 on Austin Legacy Knives. So yeah, it gets 10% you, off. That's right. So Of the charter? <laughs> of the knife. <laughs> of the knife. Okay. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. Um, uh, what were we talking about? Oh, uh, the, the, uh, <laughs> yeah, tell me about the, the, that night, because you guys had, like, it was crazy action there for a while. Yeah, I went out there, and we were sitting around, and this line went off, and got hooked or someone got in the rig because you, you got to strap into this plate harness yeah. and all this and uh uh so you can lean against the rod so one line went off a couple minutes later another line goes off and it takes forever you know to reel it in because it's so far out and you get to fight it for a long time and uh but it was like line after line was just going off we ended up with Six tiger, Six tiger sharks. sharks. One of them was over ten feet. He had his tail bitten off. Yeah, by he would have been. So I wonder what bit his tail. He would have been over twelve. Yeah, he, he would have been over twelve. I mean, it, it was like a monster. Yeah, I wanted to. Uh, what I do is I'll grab the bottom of the tail and then put my hand on the top of it before I get the tail rope on it. I grab the bottom of it and then just slap my shoulder, and I didn't know what happened. And then I looked down at it, and it didn't have the top like part a of the tail. Nub. It was yeah. weird. And it fought hard too for not you guys having ta- a tail. And you guys uh, tag these sharks for Noah, yes, sir. right? Who tracks them all over the world? And so, um, what's the biggest one? What's the biggest shark you've got? Because I wonder what, what people are thinking about. What's the biggest one? Uh, we got one that was twelve three a couple years ago, a tiger shark, and he weighed because uh, the, the Noah charts yeah, they they right. say you know they. You have to fill in all this stuff right. when you do, and they have a chart that'll tell you how much it weighed. Yes, I'm pretty sure that the Noah chart said that it was around 1,200 pounds. Wow, good grief! Fat fish. That's yeah. a big. That's a big <laughs> fish. That is a big fish. Well, guys, thank you. And so, if um, it's AustinLegacyKnives.com and GulfCoastNation.com, and uh, with summer gearing up and you know you got birthdays christmas all this kind of stuff going up for austin legacy knives and with oh, yeah. and we're rigging up a uh the uh uh the knife of the month club will be that's right something soon so. yeah because you got you've already got several people in that yep just a couple and uh so but we're trying to get it situated so we can have it on the site and all um but it'll be where you There'll be kind of a median price uh, with 12 knives, and you just you get one knife a month. It'll be uh, there'll be a kitchen series, an outdoor series, um, or a steak knife series where you get a steak knife a month or something. Well, that would be a, that would be an incredible gift. Yeah, it'll just be. Uh, well, I mean, if you want your own kitchen set, or it'd be like if you just always need to have a gift handy to give to someone. They'll come in, you know, regularly scheduled every month. Yeah, because the, so. the and the packaging, I must say, mom you, helped out a little well, bit with it, that. It looks <laughs> awesome. Yeah, they come in nice, nice, uh, nice brown boxes. They're that are branded, branded and yeah. tied and everything. So, oh yeah, look good. And then GulfCoastNation.com. dot uh, com. Don't forget to subscribe to the, push that subscription button when you go and watch them on YouTube, but. Gotta watch the what's the what's the amberjack video? 
We've got a couple of Shark videos. The one where the shark comes and eats oh, it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, right on top of the water. That was crazy. They yeah, have the like water a, was muddy that day, too, and I did not see it coming. It scared me so bad. <laughs> they had a, you, that was like a 20-pound amberjack. That you had on, and a was it a bull shark? Yes, sir. big bull shark comes right to the top of the water, right at the boat, and eats it off right there. Some it's television impressive. show made that video of the week. Yes, yeah, sir. It was unbelievable. But, um, I, and I am also your charter this Saturday night. Uh, I, I already talked to Dylan, that's how I know this is uh, people from Colorado, and I. I was shocked. Last summer, you had people drive from 13 states to fish with you guys. Yes, sir. And so um, definitely go on gulfcoastnation.com and and book a trip. I mean, it is just it, – it's the night of a lifetime. And, and you catching guys – Catching real-life monsters. Yeah, yeah. catching <laughs> real-life monsters. I mean, you're just never going to do anything like this in your life. And and you guys have like a, a campfire thing and and they'll sing so, for you so and they'll that's sing true. for you which you know that's worth it right there by itself <laughs> but thank you guys so much and I, I just want to say with the Father's Day edition of this um, I appreciate you guys being with me and it has been and continues to be actually an honor to watch uh, the men you are becoming. You're my friends. You're you're my sons. I love you so much. I love you both so much, and so proud of you, and who you're becoming. Thank you. Thank you. Love you <laughs> thank too. Thank you very much. <laughs> I appreciate you having us. Love you too. All right. All right. I'm Andy Andrews, the professional noticer, harnessing common sense and wisdom to plow through challenges all the way to an answer for you. Hey, where do you seek wisdom? Are you seeking wisdom? You know, this doesn't happen by osmosis. You really have to seek. Allow me to suggest wisdomharbor.com. That's wisdom, H-A-R-B-O-U-R.com. Go there now and check it out. It is unbelievable. Uh, what, what are, it's just such a variety of things that people are finding so many different uses for. Businesses are using Wisdom Harbor to create teams, to uh, create a, an extensive library of cultural literacy for their people. And, uh, you know, you know it's, there's a 30-day free trial. There's no reason not to go. But do it now. Do it for your family, your business, and your schools. That's wisdomharbor.com, wisdom, H-A-R-B-O-U-R.com. Okay. I'm the professional noticer, ladies and gentlemen. If you appreciate this podcast, I really appreciate you going to iTunes and giving us a nice review. Five stars. You know uh, you can only review a particular podcast on iTunes one time, right? Therefore, if you haven't already done it, please make today your day. And I think that'll do it for this week. Get us out of here, Matthew. So, ladies and gentlemen... And to the boys and girls who aspire to become ladies and gentlemen, we have reached the end of another episode of The Professional Noticer. In a world where common sense has become a superpower, I'm harnessing the mental energy I have for you, seeking wisdom, making observations, and endeavoring to answer tough questions in a way that will empower your family and your business. I'm Andy Andrews. Until next week, smile while you talk. Don't breathe anybody else's air, but do make sure you have a positive answer to the question, how's it going? And so, until next week, goodbye. This episode of The Professional Noticer was produced by Matt Limpert. The Noticer theme written and performed by Sugarcane Jane. Rotisserie Chicken provided for the cast and crew by Twinkle and Smoke of Beverly Hills. Additional financial consideration provided by PoodleLure.com. So you call yourself a fisherman, huh? Yet you spend hours helplessly flailing the water with plastic purple worms 
spinnerbaits and topwater jitterbugs. While these old standbys do catch fish, they do so only occasionally. And when fishermen come back empty-handed, the scapegoats are endless. The wind direction was wrong. There's been too much rain. There's too little rain. The water is muddy. The moon phase is wrong. Sadly, the truth never occurs to most anglers. The reality is the fish just weren't hungry. Think about it. Would you eat a plastic purple worm if you weren't starving? Yeah, neither do bass. That's why PoodleLure.com is the perfect offering to tie onto the end of your line. Several designs are available, but they all have one thing in common. Each is made from 100% natural poodle fur. What's the big deal, you ask? Fish aggressively attack poodle lure, even when they aren't hungry. For thousands of years, the best fishermen have carefully kept a secret we will now reveal. While it is common knowledge that they dislike dogs, fish absolutely hate poodles. And that's why bass tournament champions the world over fish with nothing but poodle lure spinner baits, poodle lure jigs, and poodle lure topwater taunters. Do you want a stringer of fish every time? Well, if they're not hungry, just piss them off. That's poodle lure. Dot com.